About two months ago, on March 29th, at about 2 a.m. on Chicago's west side, residents reported hearing a series of gunshots. They called the police, and the police came. When they got there, body cam footage showed later, a 13-year-old boy called Adam Toledo started running. Shortly after, he pulled out a gun and started to toss it behind a fence. In that instant, the pursuing officer fired one shot and killed Adam Toledo. So it was a tragedy, of course, but that moment, Adam Toledo's death raised a lot of important questions. For example, why is a boy who's barely a teenager out in the middle of the night on a city street with a handgun? Where are his parents? But no one in charge of the city of Chicago seemed interested in any way in exploring that or any related question. How do you get a society like that? Nobody cared. Instead, they decided on a new policy, a quick fix. They banned the police from chasing people like Adam Toledo. That'll fix it. Chicago's police department announced the policy in a Twitter post last week, quote, there will be specific prohibitions to foot pursuits. Chicago police will not pursue for an offense less than a class A misdemeanor. So what does that mean exactly? What crimes qualify as, quote, less than a class A misdemeanor? Turns out a lot of crimes. You can free, flee from the police, no problem. At most, that's disorderly conduct, a less serious class B misdemeanor. You can also steal someone's purse right in front of a police officer. You can mug a woman. As long as there's less than $400 in that purse, you cannot be pursued. You can trespass onto private property. You can bash a store window. You can commit assault. You can do a lot of things to degrade and destroy society, and there's nothing the police can do to you if you run away. It's a huge change, and it's going to change Chicago profoundly. So how did local media cover this? Well, they just lied about it. NBC Chicago, for example, reported that the policy, quote, prohibits foot chases stemming from minor traffic offenses. That's not true. But the Associated Press said exactly the same thing. Quote, the new policy prohibits foot pursuits for minor traffic violations. But again, that's a lie. This policy has nothing to do with minor traffic violations. It's a whole category of crimes, some of which are serious and it protects the people who commit them. And that's why officials in the city of Chicago established a lot of other restrictions on foot pursuits last week. Too many obstacles in the way? No foot chase allowed. Does the suspect have a broken arm? You can't chase him, and on it goes. By the way, if police officers violate any part of this policy, they can be fired. But if police decide not to chase criminal suspects, no one says a word. So do you think there will ever be a foot pursuit again? No. Of course not, and that's the point. If there are no foot chases, there is no body camera footage, and there's no controversy, just more crime. And if there's no footage from body cams, that means people who don't live in Chicago won't know the condition of the city, which is grave. They won't know that 13-year-old boys are out carrying guns in the middle of the night. So Chicago's leaders haven't solved the problem, but they have succeeded in burying the problem. They're just hoping you won't notice. There are city officials in other cities who have been honest about crime and what it takes to stop it. James Craig is one of them. He was the longtime chief of police in Detroit. He's reportedly at this point considering a run for governor of Michigan. This is his first interview since he <laughs> left the Detroit Police Department. He joins us tonight. Chief, thanks so much for coming on. So if hey, thanks, a mugger takes a... Show. Oh, well, we're honored as always. If a woman, ta if a woman is mugged, and she's got less than 400 bucks in her purse, police can't chase the mugger. What do you think that will do to Chicago or any city with that policy? It's ridiculous, Tucker. It is absolutely, it's absurd. I've been in this business 44 years. I can't tell you how many individuals I've chased on foot to stop a violent crime. And now they want to micromanage when you can chase. It's absurd. And, and we're now moving into an area to protect a criminal. But we never talk about, Tucker, what about the victims? What about the fa right. What about the people that live in vulnerable communities who happen to be mostly persons of color? It's shameful. It is shameful. And I got to tell you, here in Detroit, they want us to do our job. So, so that was my next question. What do you think people who live in neighborhoods where there's a fair amount of crime, or in some cases a lot of crime, what do you think they think of this? They think it's ridiculous. They want you to do your job. You know, when I got, when I got appointed as chief eight years ago, you know, people were sick and tired 
of crime and that the police were demoralized. And so we went in and very effectively and assertively took back our streets. We call it throwing parties. That's what people want. Long as you do it constitutionally, treat people with dignity and respect, and we do that. Right. But this madness, you know what? I got to tell you, Chuck, I was in Chicago three weeks ago, met up with a couple of police officers and said, Chief, we wish you would be our chief. I said, well, that's nice, but your mayor would probably fire me within five minutes. She, she's not going to want to embrace the type of policing I believe in, and, and I'm talking about constitutional policing that makes members of our communities feel safe. This is ridiculous, Tucker, and where we headed, we're in trouble. And the folks that talk about, well, you know, we don't want police to come in communities and, and make arrests. We want to let violent offenders out of jail. The judges, as it stands right now in Detroit, we're locking up violent felonies, felons who are armed with weapons. And they laugh at our police officers because they say, well, I'll be out before you get off your shift. That's why we're having violent crime. If you want to know why these cities are having violent crime, Tucker, it's because of one thing. The judges are embracing this bail reform and they're not using common sense. I'll say it, and I've continued to say it, it's wrong. Their public service is just like I was. I'm accountable, accountable to the people. What about the prosecutors? What about the victims? Who is talking to the victims, Tucker? Not one person. It's sad. It's, our profession it's, it's, is in a crisis. A small number of people commit an overwhelming percentage of the crime, and if they're out on the street, then you're going to have a lot of crime. It sounds like that's what you're saying. Absolutely. And what I'm suggesting is talk to the victims, talk to the families, make reasonable common sense decisions on who should be allowed out. Right now, I'm told there are 13 individuals who were charged with premeditated murder out walking the streets of Detroit. Shameful. And it's not just Detroit. When you look at all these cities, talk about New York, Talk about Chicago. This is a cross. So who are we supporting? The criminals. And then the ACLU yeah. comes out against me and said, well, well, Chief, you got it wrong. No, you live in a gated community. You're not dealing with <laughs> what people who live in vulnerable communities, they want the police. Bottom line. I talk to these folks. And you know what? It's not over for me, Tucker. It's not over. I'm going to continue yeah. to well, fight I, for our men and women who serve. It's not over for me. I hope you run for governor. I hope you beat your current governor badly. We'll be rooting for you. James Craig of Detroit. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.